meandering towards your seats, that would be great. Just say that for John. Oh, there you go, John. Just take it all out, man. So I, uh, yeah, I see we're, we're definitely practicing, uh, what is that? Social, social distancing. Facial awareness. Spread out, everybody. All right, and I don't want to alarm everybody, but the council has these up here at our desk, and so I hope it's not a really long meeting. But I didn't expect to have a blanket up here. I think it's trinket night. I think our uh, I think our PR group's been up to something because we all did get our thousand dollar bottles worth of hand sanitizer. So if anybody uh, feels the need, I'll share some of mine with you. It's ten dollars a shot. All right, enough of that. My jokes aren't very funny. I know. All right, we got a full contingent of the council tonight. Welcome home, Brian. Brian made it back right before they closed the board. <laughs> yeah, look at it. There you go. Darren, you might want to uh, try some of that spacing. Yeah, do, do, do I need to close social spacing, distancing? Uh, social social distancing. I tried. I just keep coming back for more. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what social media is. Forget about social distancing. All right, very good. All right, uh, we do appreciate that you all are here tonight. Uh, we have a uh, public hearing and then we'll have a work session. So the first thing I have the pleasure of doing and that is reading the rules of order for public hearing for zoning matters, which is city code section 280-2. The hearing shall be presided over by the mayor after calling the hearing to order. The mayor shall request that the parcels of property which are the subject of the zoning proposal be identified in red. Following such identification and reading, the development director's recommendation shall be presented. The mayor and city council shall cause the director's written recommendation be made part of the record. Proponents of each proposed zoning decision shall then be allowed a total of 10 minutes for presentation of data, evidence, and opinion concerning the zoning decision. If all 10 minutes are not used, the proponent's remaining time may be reserved for rebuttal. Opponents of each proposed zoning decision shall then be allowed a total of 10 minutes for presentation of data, evidence, and opinion concerning each zoning decision. The presentation times may not be reduced, but may be extended by majority vote, provided they are extended equally for proponents and opponents. Anyone wishing to speak must come to the microphone, give their name and address to city clerk. Do not speak unless you have the microphone and have been recognized. I like doing that. First item under public hearing is the Shambly Town Center DCI 5520 Peachtree Road at all. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is an application for a DCI with 27 concurrent variances and two waivers located at various addresses along Broad Street, Urbandale Drive, Ingersoll Ranch, and Peachtree Road. Site is zone uh, 7.3 acres. Um, in your packet, you have an application for a uh, mixed use development, which includes 280 multifamily units and six foot work units, a uh, mixture of commercial and retail space, a multi story parking garage, and a standalone four story office building. Um, to update you, and, and this is clear, clear, made clear in your staff report, uh, we are now recommending this be reviewed as a two phase project. Um, in meeting with staff and, and working with the developer, um, we had some comments about the mixed use portion of the multifamily and felt there was uh, efforts uh, came to an agreement with the developer that there are some changes that would be positive for the site make it comply more with the town center pledge and the town center master plan so tonight we're only asking you to consider phase one which will be the office building and any associated variances and waivers with the office building and phase two will come back to you we're hoping next month um, will include everything else that's the mixed use component the plaza the parking structure uh, the variances related to this project, uh, variance 12 is to reduce the minimum floor to ceiling height along Peachtree Road, uh, to not provide a pedestrian entrance um, from directly from Peachtree Road. 15 and 16 are from the PUD booklet and that has to do with building types along the storefront street and Peachtree and Peach Road. Uh, variance 21 is to allow above ground utilities between the building and the street. Uh, variance 23 to not uh, provide inter-parcel connectivity to a recently site. Um, then there's variance for loading spaces and then to allow projecting sign to exceed the maximum size allowed. Allow, allow. Uh, we also have two waivers, um, a waiver for tree density and then a waiver to not bury existing utilities on the site. So this application is for this four-story commercial brick and glass uh, office building on, on Peachtree Road. 
Um, the primary building entrance is on the east facade, so that would be directed towards the future parking structure. Um, there is no door pro proposed on Peachtree Road, which is why they've requested a variance. Um, all facades do include balconies with metal railings, and there is extensive plaza space and landscaping uh, proposed around the building. They are constructing the rail trail segment that runs along Peachtree Road with the required pedestrian amenity. Um, this, this office does comply with the recommendations in the Town Center Master Plan, also the rail trail master plan phase three extension study and the recently adopted comprehensive plan. Um, phase two, as I said, will be coming back with those revised visions to better meet the present regulation. And you'll see in the conditions, we've recommended that um, you consider a staff condition that would require them to come back and get that phase two approval prior to issuing any building permits or, or way of service permits. I don't think that's gonna be an issue, but it's just to make it clear that before any progress is made that we have a full picture of what the entire site will look like. Here's an aerial photo. Again, you can see a um, combination of DDA property and Pierce partnership property. Uh, this is the regulating plan from the downtown Shanley Town Center PUD. Uh, you can see the property highlighted there in blue. Uh, that's in the mixed use district and the development and land uses do comply with this plan and zoning district. Here's the overall site plan. Again, we're focusing on that area in red this evening. Um, we're only considering the office and any variances and waivers related to the construction of the office building. Uh, the applicant submitted elevations. Here you can see the uh, west and the south elevation. So the top elevation would be the one that would face Peachtree Road. Uh, the one at the bottom would face the rest of Dutch Michelle's property. Uh, this on the top would be the north elevation facing um, towards the rear and the plaza and then the east elevation. Uh, they've also submitted a rendering to give you a feel of what the office building will look like once constructed. And then there's staff uh, photos, again, a um, combination of developed and undeveloped property um, located on those four streets. Staff does recommend approval of the DCI with the majority of the variances and waivers. Um, however, we do recommend denial of the variance to um, not meet the minimum floor to ceiling height requirement, um, to not provide a pedestrian entrance directly on the Peachtree Road, and to not vary all overhead utilities. Staff recommends withdrawal of the remaining variances and waivers. Um, in terms of conditions, um, just to clarify and point out the previous condition that I mentioned, um, condition three requires them to come back with phase two prior to issuance of an LDP. Um, one concern that we did have at this point was perhaps not enough activation of the office building on Peachtree Road and the future plazas. So we do have a condition for your recommendation that would require those spaces to be activated with a restaurant or retail. And, um, and further clarifying that that shall be clearly delineated on phase two, so you can see how that works with the entire site. So when they come back for that major modification to this DCI, if approved, then they'll reflect that retail commercial space in that space. DRD did review this uh, application and they had two recommended conditions. The memory's off there, I apologize. Uh, condition six is related to the retaining walls and condition five, they wanted to see some more streetscaping along that internal drive. Um, it's really just a driveway, so it's not a requirement, but DRD thought it would make it more pleasant and so they have recommended that condition. That's all I have. Very good, thank you, Matt. John, do you have anything to add? Very good. And the uh, mayor just in my office in time, so thank you. All right, very good. So we'll have 10 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those who wish to speak in favor, please come up to the microphone, uh, give your name and address and or relationship to the project and city clerk, please. Great. Uh, my name is uh, Bob Boyles. I was joining at my student desk. Okay, I live at 2606 Orchard Run in the city of Atlanta. Um, 30321. And I am um, one of the principals of the Seven Oaks Company. And I know this is, um, it's great to be with you all again tonight. Uh, and I w what I really want to do is give an introduction into what Matt's gone through and then be prepared to answer questions. I know you all are quite familiar with this, but for some of the folks in the audience, um, I wanted to remind everyone that in, on June 26 of 2018, we made a recommendation as uh, as the city's um, uh, the developer for the uh, downtown development authority made a recommendation to the city for this downtown plan. We can go to the next slide, um, and that is the overall plan that was included in the recommendation. It was done by Bob Hughes, who grew up here in Chambly, one of the foremost uh, land planners in the southeast, and. Um, and you can see incorporated in that plan uh, are a lot of the elements that we're going to start seeing come to fruition here in the next couple of years. 
coming out of that study, which was <coughs> conducted by Noel and um, Associates, uh, they projected a need in the downtown district for 644 multifamily units, um, single family uh, detached property of about 47 units, homes of 60, condos for sale attached at 40 units, 122 hotel, 58,000 square feet of restaurant and neighborhood retail, and finally 98,000 square feet of office. And what I've done is I've put a red circle around those items that are either happening or part of our um, downtown uh, uh, rezoning application for the city center. So it's pretty exciting for us to see um, us meeting that demand. Let's go to the next slide. We made five major recommendations um, to uh, the council and to the DBA, all of which you all are in the process of implementing, which yeah. is a, a real compliment to um, the mayor, to the council, uh, to the DBA, and to um, city staff. Um, you've implemented a new sub-area district, and we're one of the first zonings to come through that. Um, you have made uh, the move to move our your um, city jail facility to a new uh, pro uh, facility over on Buford Highway, thus paving the way for a city hall, which is consistent with your plan. You've developed an infrastructure development plan. <coughs> and then <coughs> your incentive plan that the DBA has implemented to encourage compatible development. We are, um, both we and Worthing Company, who is our multifamily partner, um, are here because of that incentive plan. And finally, monitor the city financing objectives, so to ma maximize the opportunity for success. I just think it's interesting because when I went back and looked at these things about two weeks ago, I realized it's really happening. And that's exciting, that's exciting. All right, next slide. So here's what we're focused on tonight. Uh, in fact, Matt has already mm -hmm. kind of gone through it, but that is the plan in the original um, uh, plan that was submitted. And you'll notice that the Pierce family property, <coughs> excuse me, uh, was not included in that. And because of uh, Darren Collier and the good folks at Worthing um, concluding their negotiations with the Pierce family, that is now part of the overall plan, which gives us a better result. Uh, let's go to the next slide. What you see up here now is part of our marketing plan for the project. Um, you'll see that the office building is sitting right in the middle of a series of all new, either new construction or adaptive reuse or new government facilities. And we think that's a, um, it, it will be a great complement to the city. <coughs> Finally, uh, two more slides. Um, one is, or three more slides, Broad Street uh, Market. One of the was taking the Indiana Antiques facade um, and repurposing that as a paseo through to a plaza space that is immediately behind that. And that is what's envisioned in that uh, picture. Um, we obviously need a variance for the Broad Street Market sign uh, if we put that in. And so, um, but it, it begins to create um, some real exciting, uh, I hate to use the word synergy, but between um, what's going on across the street with the new city hall and our project. Um, next slide, uh, Matt has already shown you this, um, this image of the building, which is a, a throwback to what we would call mercantile, kind of an industrial look, but also with a very new or very efficient office floor plate inside that building. And we, one of the things to address, uh, one of the variance requests is that um, we are planning both on, along the, um, uh, the, in two different locations on our floors to pr provide grease traps and uh, ability to convert space over to retail. We don't know whether we're going to lease it to retail at first, but, uh, and I think if the city had the opportunity to make a um, 100,000 foot lease with a good uh, tenant that would be the member of the community, we'd want to make that lease and not have it hampered by that. But we are providing for it, and it will be in, it's in our construction budget. Last thing, uh, just this last image is a collage of different uh, slides, um, but you'll see there's two images there of the lobby of our building. One of the things that we've been instructed by our uh, brokerage team, which leased up Pont City Market and 
725 Bronx, is that the building has to be authentic, which is, I think, a term that you all are very familiar with, and we are doing our best to provide that. The total loft, we are actually calling this a loft office. It will have tall raised ceilings. We have 25,000 foot floor plates. Which is a good number in this market. And then our on-site amenities that we're looking at providing would include a co-working lobby space, full service coffee kiosk, very similar to what you're seeing in a lot of these office buildings today, a high-tech conference center space, bike storage room and showers, and then also direct access to all the project retail that's going to be surrounding us, as well as to the public plaza behind the Indiana Institute's building. So that's a quick summary. I don't have anything else to add at this point, but we'll be prepared to answer any questions that the mayor, the council, or staff have for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. If anyone else would come up and speak in favor, we've got about two and a half minutes left. Very good. Anyone wish to speak in opposition? Very good. We'll move on for those of you that are new to our procedure here. If you'll look, if you have an agenda, you look further down once we get into the work session. This item will come up again if the council has any questions from the staff and or the applicant. We will answer those at this time. So with that, we'll move on then to the second item of the public hearing, which is PV 2020-579-580, which is 5450 Peachtree Boulevard rezoning Chick-fil-A. I understand the applicant has asked for a deferral. That's correct. So they asked for a deferral until the next month's work. The original request was for two months to May 2020. It would be your discretion to defer it for 30 days or 60 days. Or not defer it. No, well, I mean, if there's just a consent of the council, we'll just move this to the May work session. So without objection, we'll work that to the May work session. Two months. Two months. Is that right? Very good. I see a head nod and come on for Chick-fil-A people. That's always good. Okay, so that will move and we can take that off the agenda. And we'll see you all again in May. But you can stick around if you want. It gets real exciting from here on. The next item is PZ 2020-596, which is 5368 Peachtree Road variances, which is the blue top expansion. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a request for three variances at 5368 Peachtree Road. The exact site is on Village Commercial. It's a small lot. It's less than a tenth of an acre. In this case, the applicant is requesting to install a mobile trailer as a permanent accessory structure for the sale of food and alcohol. There are three variances required for this request. The first is to allow metal building. The second is to allow an accessory structure that would not be subordinate to the primary structure. And the third is to allow an accessory structure to be located on the lot line. You likely recall that this property has been before you three times in the recent past. In July, there were variances related to Spanish Moon, which was a renovation of the existing building on the parcel that was attached to Eugenia's at the time. The applicant wanted to put a mobile trailer in the front to serve food at the front of the lot. That was approved. And then in 2019, plans changed. They decided to demolish the existing building. And so we had to get a variance approved to allow that mobile trailer to be the principal structure. This request is to allow a second mobile trailer. This one's 248 square feet. It would be located more towards the back of the site, adjacent to a covered patio area. It would be a bar and serving area that would be accessible from the existing Blue Top restaurant. Here's the site plan or the aerial. And on the site plan, that area circled in blue is Blue Top. That red is that narrow parcel. And you can see the front. That's the mobile trailer that was previously approved. So that's where that would be located. Just to be clear, both of these would have to be converted to be permanent structures by code. So when I say mobile trailer, they're mobile now. They will become permanent. And then this yellow square is the location of the new trailer, which would be located. Here's the site plan showing. You can see the smaller trailer. The one on the top is looking from the street. And the one on the bottom shows you both trailers looking from Blue Top. The existing one, or the previously approved one in the front. And then the one on the bottom is the one that's 
and then the new one in the back. The site photo showing the property. Staff does recommend approval of the request um, contingent upon the site plan. They've also recommended the condition that once the trailers are placed on the property, they need to be fully converted within 90 days. So I have good. Thanks, Matt. Anything, John? Very good. All right. We have 10 minutes for anyone who wishes to come up and speak in favor. Andy Lasky, 2660 I own Blue Top, and um, I'm just trying to see how much money I can give the city in fees for, for all these different revisions. But uh, you know, ideally, we wanted to have a um, you know like a mezcal bar, and then the building was found not to be functional and safe, so we went to this plan. Um, now we're just asking for this revision to be uh, the trailer which is enclosed, which accomplishes a lot of the health requirements. Thanks. Thank you. So if anybody would like to come up and just speak for about you know nine minutes, Lori Drews. Anybody else in favor? All right, very good. Is there anybody in opposition? Very good. All right, well, we'll bring this up again under the work session uh, as we will with all the public hearing items. So the next item under public hearings is uh, PZ2020601, which is the Rosewood HOA variances. It's a fence replacement. Yes, Mayor and Council. <coughs> this is a request for two variances for our fence replacement at the Rosewood HOA. Uh, the property is on NR1 uh, residential. Uh, the variances for the fence, there's two required. One for the height um, in this particular area, the fence can only be four feet requesting six feet on um, the second is to allow a fence to be um, more than 50 percent transparent in the front yard uh, rosewood subdivision is a 44 lot subdivision uh, this particular property includes three lots which are lots that have parting on two streets and i'll show you that on the map here shortly um, so a lot of these 11 lots technically have two front yards um, but there's an existing fence that is located on the property it's six feet tall if the fence is completely removed, it has to meet current code. Um, it would have to be four feet. Um, if they were just to repair it, it would not have to meet that requirement if they wish to fully remove it, all the posts, and reconstruct it. Uh, here's the site plan. You can see um, the through lots are the yellow lots, so they have frontage on the cul-de-sac and also along North Key Street and North Shallowford. Uh, so they do have the front yard fence requirements on both frontages. That red area is the location of the existing fence and where the fence will be replaced. Here's the standard detail. It's a standard wooden privacy fence that supports will face in uh, to the property, which is required by code. And then some photos, a little bit hard to see. You can see on the right, the fence in the background. It is in disrepair, the course is falling. Um, and then on a portion of the property, there's a, a nice existing hedgerow that hides the fence from the street. And they do, they do plan to keep that hedgerow. So staff does recommend an approval of the request um, that, that it be contingent upon the site plan and that they keep or replace any vegetative screening that's currently in place. So I have very good. Thank you very much. John, anything? Very good. All right, 10 minutes. If anyone wishes to speak in favor, please come up with the microphone.
Chair, please, as the council, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to add an item to the agenda. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Very good. We have a motion second to suspend the rules to add an item to the agenda. All those in favor? That passed unanimously. Next. And I'd like to move to add the delay of penalty and interest for occupational tax to the agenda under city clerk as item number three. Second. Very good. Do we have a motion second to add the item of, say it again. To delay of penalty. The delay of penalty and interest for occupational tax to the agenda is item number three under city clerk. Very good, thank you. And we have seconds that. Is there any discussion? So motion second then uh, to add the item. Uh, all in favor? All right, so we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, so we'll go back then to where I was. We had Atlanta United Watch Party. Thank you, Mayor. Um, unfortunately, we have to uh, let everyone know that this event has been canceled. Um, due to multiple events that they, at this time, they, will, they do not plan on playing the game and we will not be having the uh, watch party. Well, yeah, there's nothing to watch. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, do we, do we need to take any action on that? <coughs> there was a presentation. No, anyway. presentation. Very good. So, uh, now we have a presentation about the tree canopy study. GIS director for InterDev. We're a, uh, a IT, GIS, and uh, cybersecurity firm here in the Atlanta area. Uh, <clears throat> our headquarters are up in Roswell. I'm a neighbor. I live very close by off of Judge and Brookhaven, so I'm very familiar with the area. But here to talk about the uh, tree canopy study that we performed with change detection between 2009 and 2017. Uh, finished in uh, late last year in December. And it's really a, um, it's a, a qualitative, I'm sorry, a quantitative study of the, the tree canopy and not necessarily qualitative. So this is more, uh, we measured every square meter of the city as far as canopy or non-canopy. We didn't go into um, the health of the trees or the, the age, but really just a, a, a qualitative, I'm sorry, I keep saying this, a quantitative uh, study. So, uh, oh, I guess I can, so I'm going to, I'll just kind of go really quickly over the results and then uh, talk a little bit about the methodology because uh, the one thing, I, uh, the results are what they are. It's about a 1.5% uh, loss, but well within the margin of error. So uh, ultimately from 2009 and 2017, I'll go a little bit into why we chose those different years. There was essentially no change in the tree, can and tree canopy uh, citywide. Uh, but for, the rest, for a big chunk of the presentation, the next couple minutes, I'm going to go over the methodology. Because really what I think is really important <coughs> is not that you just know these numbers, but that you're confident in them. And that when, if I'm not in the room describing how we got them and you are uh, to uh, folks, you're, you're confident in these numbers. So uh, I do want to spend a little bit of time on how we got to these numbers. And then we can come back and do a little bit of interpretation of, uh, of what we came up with. So the methodology really is acquiring a certain type of imagery, and I'll kind of get into that, but that's really important to compare apples to apples from one year to the next. Uh, then we'll go ahead and analyze the imagery. We'll do an accuracy assessment, and that during that accuracy assessment is when we come up with the margin of error and, and confidence intervals. And then we'll do a, a year over year comparison. And I'm gonna go pretty quickly through the whole thing here. What we're trying to measure really is, uh, on the right-hand side is just a, a image I found on the web, but it's, you know, dogwood trees are, are, are taller, and we, and we really try to pull out uh, shrubs or sometimes areas of, of kudzu, like high kudzu or, or um, uh, English ivy come up as trees, and we'll try to pull those out, which are just very dense areas of vegetation that we sometimes show up as trees that we pull out. And that kind of gets pulled out during the, the accuracy assessment. The, uh, the imagery that we use is, is developed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and it's called the NAIC program. It's a free program. All you have to do is pay for the shipping of data. It's very large amounts of data, so the comp they can't get it over the web. They literally ship it to you, so it's just a small fee for that. But it's really important in, um, that we use this information, this data. A couple of attributes of the, of the imagery, it's a, it is one meter. So we are measuring one meter, um, uh, we're calling every meter in the city is canopy or non-canopy. It's collected during what's called leaf-on season. So that's uh, most of your imagery during, uh, if you 
you look at Google Maps or Bing Maps, it's, it's taken during the winter. And that's because you typically want to see roads, you want to see houses, you want to see infrastructure. That's what you're looking for when you, see, when you go to, to look that. For here, we're looking at weeds, we're looking at trees. So we want it during weed pond season. The, uh, the NAE program uh, will capture that imagery during that weed pond season. And then they do every two or three year cycles. And uh, the, last, the last attribute that's really important is it takes infrared imagery and infrared really just allows vegetation to show up when you look at that. And you can kind of see it in a way that really uh, that vegetation shows up very easily. One more thing about the imagery um, is that they, like I said, they try to, they're trying to, we try to recreate, you know, compare apples to apples. So you can kind of see right here, these two imagery that we, com that we use to compare your canopy was taken within eight years and about eight days of each other. So within eight days, it tries to be the exact day, the exact time of day. See the two red arrows, they're, they're really pointing to the shadows. And you can kind of see, based on what the, those trees and that shadow, that this imagery was taken eight years apart, eight days, minus eight days, and within a few hours of each other. So we're really trying to get, and that's what the NAEP image, that's why this NAEP imagery is so important, or the imagery that you pick is so important. It doesn't have to be NAEP. For, um, for this purpose and budget, we wanted to kind of keep it at a, a, a certain level. Uh, so we, this is the imagery we went for. But that is a impo very important part. Shadows can really cause havoc on if the, cre the tree or not. So one thing we kind of look for. The next step is uh, the, tech, the uh, very fancy term, ISO cluster unclassification, unsupervised classification. That's really the, this day, in this day and age, uh, machine learning is what this is. And we basically want to train this model. We will look at several hundred pixels and we'll say, this is a tree, this is not a tree. And then we'll train the model and, it'll, and then it'll run and it'll just, it'll face in really pretty short amount of time, it'll give us your tree canopy. Now it's not 100% perfect. Actually, it's not even close to 100% perfect yet. Um, so, but uh, that it, uh, so that's where the next step comes is the quality of control step. We'll break up the imagery. It will break up the the city into uh, quadrants or grids, and we'll go and we'll just kind of look for major areas of of dis um, the wrong classification. In this example. I have a baseball field where there was these dark patches of grass that showed up in the outfield that were obviously not trees, but showed up trees in that model. Uh, we just identified those, we clip it out, clean it up, and we, kind of, we, we, we go through the whole city. That's a pretty manual process that we go through the whole city. So uh, um, this, big, this is probably one of the more bigger chunks of time. Uh, so, that's, that, so we clean up the data, and then we do an accuracy assessment. Is agriculture and food uh, for United Nations agricultural and food. The, I forget what the actual term, but it's a, a mapping accuracy and change detection. And really, what we're trying to do here is just kind of create something that's uh, reproducible and defensible. Uh, and so we kind of we go out and try to find the right document and just kind of you can go to the, and I have it sor sourced. If you really want to kind of get a good night's sleep, uh, the document to get you to go to sleep. Uh, but it, it really, that document allows us to kind of come up with, with confidence intervals, uh, margin of errors, ac accuracy assessment. And what it really, next slide here, really quickly, uh, based on the several million square meters that the city has, we'll put into a sampling set and it'll say, to get a good sample, to get 95% confidence, plus or minus, you need to go ch literally check X amount of points, and that's what this this phase is. It's going out. Not that we have, not do you can go out and check the field, but we different sources of imagery will go at, go ahead and check that um, those those sources to kind of say this this the model is telling us it's a tree. Is it really a tree? And we'll kind of go over the several hundred points and figure out if it's a tree or not. Uh, interpreting the results. So that, that is the methodology. I know I went through that really quick, but uh, that. It's pretty important to understand and be confident in, in how we got the results. But ultimately, what we're saying is, uh, and I, this is really for me, uh, if you're a statistics person, you probably get this right away. But what we're saying is, in 2009, 
Uh, one thing actually going back, the reason why we picked 2009, 2017 is because the NAIC program back in 2009, they were, they were um, flying imagery that was three square meters before 2009. And after 2009, they, they got a little more accurate. They got down to one square meter pixel sizes, if that makes sense. So to compare apples to apples, we went back to 2009. And it is a really good you know, cross section of kind of the setting a baseline of what your tree canopy really is. Uh, but what, what it's saying is 95% of the time, if you run the model the same way I ran it, you will get uh, somewhere in between one, plus or minus 1.7% of 37. And uh, 2017, if you ran this model um, you know, 100 times, 95 of those times, you would also get within that same margin of error. So that's, that's kind of what we're saying, the, the, statistical, the statistical significance of, the, of how we came up with this, these numbers. And I think this is, might even be the last slide, but on the left-hand side, you can actually see where showing the, where the canopy was gained overall and where areas were um, areas of loss. On the left-hand side, it's every meter. Sometimes it's really hard to see, really interpret what you're seeing when you look at every square meter, if it, if it gained uh, canopy or if it lost canopy. So we really, on the right-hand side, we aggregated some of that area to kind of be a little bit easier to show where you, you really gained or lost. A look, uh, just a quick analysis shows there's uh, some, some loss in the, in the southern kind of neighborhoods, but there was some major gains in some of the area just north of the uh, runway. On the north side of the runway, there's kind of these, uh, a little bit of open fields or there's some major gain there. And actually, even in the in the airport, which I, in the in the report, we actually pulled out the airport. It's a very unique feature. We've done, for all the tree canopy study, the studies we've done, we've never had an airport in the middle of the uh, of the city, so it's a really unique feature. And uh, if you do try to, if you want to compare yourselves to other cities, it's really hard to do because every city is just so different that your, your, your baseline is going to be so different from your neighbors that it's really hard to compare and say we're we have more than you and and because we, uh, not every city has an airport in it and um, a very industrial area which I should be proud of uh, but uh, that'll take, that'll kind of we want to just kind of make sure you, that that's understood uh, and uh, I think that's that's really overall that's it. Um, just being kind of a math geek, I found a uh, 1960s aerial picture of uh, what Chamblee looked like, and I, I would just kind of started comparing it. Uh, this is from the University of Georgia. They have a whole um, uh, library of, of historical imagery. So I just added that just for, just for fun. But that's about it. That's the uh, presentation. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, I think uh, we'll let you go. Uh, I, got, I got from that that you don't have to worry about AI taking over your job just yet. Not yet. But it's, it's, but the model, a couple more years. The model's getting smarter. <laughs> yes, right? it is. It's getting smarter. But we got a few more years ahead of us. So okay, I'll, all right. I want to introduce you to fellow math geeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We like her. We like your math. That was that was great. Yeah. Really yeah. appreciate yeah. that. That was really, really well Any questions, I'm always down for you to answer. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. That was awesome. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to uh, staff action items. We have city clerk now. We have three items under the city clerk because she's so yeah. special. She needed an extra item. First, we have the approval of the minutes from the city council work session, February 13th. City council regular meeting, February 18th. Nothing. And we have a discussion on the city council calls meeting of February 19th. Good job, Emmy. As I say all the time, either you did a great job or the council's just not even paying attention. All right, uh, second item under city clerk, we have the alcohol ordinance update. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I just wanted to ask for an update to the alcohol code. Um, we recently discovered that the state code has a provision that defines the term bowling center um, and authorizes the governing authority of municipalities and counties to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption on the premise in any bowling center within the jurisdiction between the hours of 12.30 p.m. and 12 midnight on Sundays. Um, so we are asking for you guys to consider this ordinance change and to move it to a first read starting uh, Tuesday. Very good. Is there any discussion to this item? 
Any objection to moving to first read? If you would please move that to first read. Thank you. And while we got your attention, Darren thought she needed more work tonight, so he asked that you talk to us about the occupational tax delay extension. Sure. Thank you for adding this item to the agenda. Um, in lieu of the coronavirus outbreak and what is that? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I missed something. I'm sorry. And the press release um, issued by the city of Chamblee uh, this afternoon, we're asking that the council consider an extension on penalties and interest of 30 days, um, putting it to begin on June 1st of this. Year. If we could have action on it tonight, that would be great. But if you feel the need to wait, then we'll respect that. But it would be great if we could have action on it this evening. Okay. I'd like to move to approve the request to delay the effective date for penalties and interest for occupational tax renewals until June 1st, 2020. Second. Very good. Is there any discussion this item? Good. Uh, we have a motion to second then to allow for the delay in the occupational tax and penalties, etc., as stated by Darren. All those in favor? That passed unanimously. So you take that off the agenda now for Tuesday because we got action on it. Thank you. Some people they can take a little more time so they don't just like cram into the lobby all at once and sneeze on each other. Okay, moving right along. City manager, that would be you. Thank you, Mayor. We have a budget amendment to reflect the, the GMA lease agreement uh, that you saw last month. Um, the items uh, for this agreement is essentially moving. Uh, revenues uh, from the capital lease uh, and then expenses related to vehicles, computer equipment, and other equipment for those vehicles. Is there any discussion this item? Move to standard charge variety budget amendment. Thank you very much, city manager. All right, next item is under development department. So we're back to the Shambly Town Center DCI, which is 520 Peachtree Road at all. So does the council have any questions, discussion? Darren, you'd like to grab your microphone and go. I do, I, I guess it's more of a comment, but I'd like to uh, ask staff if they considered asking the applicant to plan to move paying into the fund and potentially extending the range at which they can plant trees. I just find our tree fund is growing, and I think it'd be great if we had someone to put those, but I didn't know if uh, y'all have an opinion on that. You said we said something about the trees. Uh, and then the, uh, I guess I should ask you as well if you have any objections to that. Hey, Bob, come up with the microphone for us, please, so we can all hear you. And so that I think you're on camera. I'm pretty sure one of those faces the other way, but I, I always got scared that they're all going to like start spinning and take off or something. Darren, I wanted to make sure uh, I understood the suggestion. It was to add additional trees to allow you to plant off site instead of paying for the fund. So the trees actually make their way into the ground. I know uh, you've done some work uh, as it relates to a potential rail spur out there that might be a good site to go and park and things like that. So if an opportunity arises, I don't want to force you to pay when you put them in the ground. I, I maybe feel a little bit of goodwill for that. I think we'd be open for that. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the second question is just if there was a nexus for the uh, variance request for 17 feet, four inches instead of 18 feet on your ground floor plan at night. That, the reason for that is uh, the architects who did track signs or our architects, they, they just, that was the height they used for that building. And um, as uh, the mayor and I have had several rounds of discussion about this, um, we believe that 18 foot clear, and that's second part of that is made for a restaurant to go in is venting and there would have to be some sort of venting that would that's 
Yeah, we've had to we've run across that avenue. Now we'll before. certainly we'll certainly provide for adequate drainage uh, for the restaurant as well if there's a restaurant that does that. Put in. Yeah, but I've always found it's hard to put it in retro. It's easier. No, to I'm have saying, it. well, you don't. Uh, you can install the chases, but you don't have to put in the pole. Correct. Yeah, right. Correct. I think that's what he's saying, John. They're, they're, they're willing to put in the chases and the grease traps and have it ready to go. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you being here. All right. Uh, that's a very exciting project, by the way. Uh, the next item was the Chick fil A. We had uh, allowed them to, or y'all agreed to allow them to move that for two months. The uh, top expansion. Questions from the council? Yes, Ms. Karen. <coughs> I just had one question. You mentioned that they need to be, that these trailers need to be made permanent within 90 days. What does making them permanent look like? I don't understand what that entails. Yeah, it, it'd be a building code issue. Um, so they've actually submitted plans for the uh, front trailer, and it's just um, making modifications to the trailer to permanently attach it to the site. Um, it an architect would have to design it, and then our code reviewers would review it to make sure it meets the definition of a permanent structure. So we're just saying once it's placed on the site, hopefully that permit's been issued at that time, and then give them 90 days to bring it into compliance with that permit. Very good. Um, I will follow up and take over. Very good. Yes, okay, yeah. Uh, Seaside down in Florida or Agua Vera over at Wilburn Park. If you want to drive locally, those are both permanent trailers. I'd rather go to Seaside. Yeah. That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go there. I'll 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 on that one. All right. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what is the canopy? Uh, I, it, this is for Andy. What is it? Is there a canopy over the whole? No, it's. Um, it's over the back. It's part over of the it. back. And is that a what's it made of? Fabric. Yeah, you know, isn't that what you have that roof on already? Right there? No? Okay. Never mind. Keep going. Um so on the this canopy back here, um I think that one of the concerns I think that was discussed was that, that because I assume that there'll be maybe quite live music in that little area that's behind that. So that under that, under under that canopy, canopy, so they have some protection from the elements. And uh, but I understand. Uh, and I, now that I see that there's a canopy there, I think that will also have a sound dampening effect to keep the kind of the music sure. contained within the area. Yeah, and it, you know, it comes if you've been there. You know, the basketball mm -hmm. will now be covered. Okay. So it comes okay. over that, and then to the. If you notice that there's two different buildings there, right? We only own the front building, um, but they have a common wall, obviously, and so that's where it starts. Okay. It's a break in the two buildings. Other questions? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Uh, the next item is the Rosewood HOA variance for the fence replacement. Do we have a discussion on this item? Questions? No, everybody's good. All right, we're good with that. Uh, Police Department, Big Star Chief. Parks and Recreation, we're good. F for Finance, nothing. Matt Taylor, all sorts of big stars. Public Works, this will get a star even though it's on the agenda because everybody wants the roads resurfaced. The 2020 Road Resurfacing Plan brought to you by Public Works. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you mentioned, everyone wants their road resurfaced. I'll try to do this in a way that it does not dwarf the town center project. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, back in 2018, uh, DeKalb County came through the city and uh, disturbed several of our roads in different areas of the city uh, due to the uh, 2020 Consent Decree project. Uh, we just decided to suspend all of our paving operations and wait until DeKalb County was done with the project. Uh, before we began paving the roads again. It appears that they're on schedule. We're ready to, re to resume our paving now. Um, so we selected the roads for paving for the 2020 resurfacing project through a citywide 
uh, pavement condition assessment. And so we also have, we chose the, the worst roads in the city, and we try to uh, limit those roads to a particular area uh, to reduce mobilization costs uh, for the uh, bids for the resurfacing program. <coughs> the bids turn, uh, return a little bit lower than we expected. Hopefully we'll be able to resurface more roads as a result. Um, the market may change between the time that we receive our bids and the time that we begin paving, so we're not sure exactly how many more roads that we could, we'll be able to add into the uh, project. However, the roads will be selected according to the severity uh, of the road condition. The cost for the 2020 resurfacing project is about $3 million. The map that you have before you identifies the roads that are scheduled to be resurfaced um, by the roads that are in that go cover. Um, funds are currently available through our 2020 capital improvement plan and our LMIC funding that we received from GDOT. Um, the requested action is that we ask council to approve the proposed bid uh, to not exceed an amount of $3 million for allied paving contractors. So we'll do. Very good, thank you. Any other uh, any questions? I think you managed to uh, not overshadow the uh, town center development. I was successful. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a map or detail of the roads anywhere in the packet? I'm sorry, I missed it. Yes, yes. There it is. Yeah. I guess you have to see it. Yeah. It's not in the packet. Not in the packet. Oh, that's not. Is it in the appendix? No. Can we get a copy of that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, well, we're going to stick with our public works and talk about Secchi Woods Pipeline Repair. Yes, Mayor, next we have a uh, pretty significant project in the area of uh, Sickenwood Drive. It goes down Hamlin Road and then under Keswick Drive. We recently discovered a stormwater pipeline that has collapsed um, and is in need of immediate repair. Uh, typically, we would bring this type of item to you um, uh, after we were, we received bid, but due to the severity of the, uh, the conditions of the pipe, causing sinkholes in some yards of uh, a few of our residents and we're starting to see other sinkholes materialize. Um, <laughs> this pipeline is a city-owned pipeline. However, it goes through a few of our private residents, private properties. So it will require us to obtain easements to go through your property to conduct the repairs. Uh, and we would also like to execute permanent construction easements while we're, we're doing the work. Um, the project, we're anticipating the cost to come back approximately 150 to 200K. Um, again, this is a significant project. Otherwise, we would have waited for the citywide stormwater capital improvement program. Um, but we're ready to go ahead and move forward with the project at this time. Okay, thanks, Al. Is there any questions for Al? There? No, I just want to take a minute to uh, Mel Al for all his hard work and dedication on this. It was brought to my attention about six months ago and I raised it to Al and I have heard nothing but great things about his follow through and communication and diligence going through this process from the homeowners that are impacted, or I should say some of the homeowners that are impacted. So I just want to recognize your efforts and thank you for all you do. <laughs> Pretty good for a guy that wears boots with zippers. <laughs> all right, anything else? Nobody else would like to uh, get the bell's ring? All right, very good. Next item, Chambly Dunwoody Road at Buford Highway Stormwater Repair. Okay, I think pretty much everyone's aware of this intersection. It's the intersection of Chambly Dunwoody Road at Buford Highway. That road is in pretty bad condition, and it has been for quite a while. Uh, the road is in its current state because we have a drainage issue. Um, we would like to put an inline grate um, close to the area closest to Buford Highway. Um, this is actually on the east side of Buford Highway near the Jiffy Loop. In order to um, repair that road, we need to go ahead and do the stormwater repairs first. Um, so we're asking for you to approve um, the lowest bidder, which is Georgia Development Partners, at an amount, an amount of $68,856. Um, and we believe that will address all of our drainage issues. Funding is available in our current stormwater operating budget. Very good. Discussion on this item? 
but there's somebody else for us that's that's our kind of in kind do they have plans for security they do um and we'll be meeting with them again soon but they usually hire off-duty police officers Duty police officers okay excellent so let me ask about everything else how does this fit in with the corona virus thing are they are they at this point they haven't they're, they're not going to serve any corona <laughs> just to the light. This is outside the 30 days. Um, so at this point, we're still making preparation. Right. Um, that could be right. And they, they haven't canceled the one in Duluth yet. Probably will just return in March. But um, so Brittany will stay in touch with them for the next couple of days and see what their plans are. But we just want to go ahead and get it, um, see if it'll get approved just in case they can't move forward with it. Very good. Well, Derek? I'm sure this goes without saying, but if they could reach out to maybe some barrel duty officers, I think that would go a long way. Very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Boards, authorities, and committees. I know everybody looks forward. That's the only thing. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right. Then, city attorney. So, we will have one first read on Tuesday, which was the alcohol ordinance update and then we have two second reads which I think it's just two yeah which is the ordinance to amend chapter 54 of municipal court and the community redevelopment tax incentive program we get to mayor and council look at that hey, can I ask one question on the uh, oh, second yeah. read it's a quick one it's a really, yeah, really go quick ahead. one you no start uh, that's all right I'm, I'm used to that there were two ordinances referenced in the recommended motion but only one in the agenda uh, I'm assuming that there's another one floating out there, but just wanted to make sure we could get clarity on that uh, by Tuesday if we're voting for approval of one denial or another. Very good. So then, like I said, big star, everybody except Darren, because he just tries to keep us longer. But now, everybody's favorite, citizen comment. You'll be allowed three minutes to come up to the microphone, give your name and address to city clerk. Tell us what's on your mind. Keep it respectful. Everybody? All right, very good. Do we have any executive session this evening? We do not. All right, so not a land speed record, but pretty good. We're out of here in an hour and two minutes, really, because we started a little late. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. I know you uh, braved the uh, coronavirus to be here. Thank you.